Let us compute the partial fraction decomposition for 9x minus 15 over x cubed minus 1. So this is a proper fraction. We have a linear polynomial on top, a cubic on the bottom. If I tried to factor the denominator, which I need to do, I notice that x cubed minus 1 is a difference of cubes. So I get x minus 1 and x squared plus x plus 1, like so. And this is, sits up below x 9x minus 15. For which, if you try to factor x squared plus x plus 1, it's actually irreducible. The discriminant of that thing is going to be a negative 3, um, which that really can't factor that with real numbers anymore. And that's okay. We'll just adjust our, we're going to adjust our template to accommodate for the fact that we have this irreducible quadratic, right? In which case, the, your template would look like a over x minus 1, and then your second denominator would be x squared plus x plus 1, like so. Um, but what's the numerator supposed to be? Because after all, these are supposed to be proper fractions, right? If my denominator is quadratic, then your numerator could be... Well, it could be linear, actually. So we have to have something like bx plus c, like so. In which case, my strategy is going to still be let's clear the denominators times both sides by the LCD. So if you clear the denominators, that is, we multiply both sides by x minus 1 and x squared plus x plus 1. We do that to the left-hand side as well, times both sides by x cubed minus 1. They will cancel out the denominators on the left, leaving you just the numerator, 9x minus 15. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to get a times x squared plus x plus 1. And then you're going to add that to bx plus c times x minus 1, like so. For which then we proceed to annihilate. If we check x equals 1, right, that'll annihilate b and c at the same time. So we're going to plug in 1 here. Uh, we're going to get 9 minus 15 on the left-hand side, which is equal to, in that case, negative 6. On the right-hand side, you're going to get 1 plus 1 plus 1 for the coefficient of a, so you get 3a. So dividing both sides by 3, we end up with a equaling negative 2. That's the first observation. But what do you do about the b and the c, right? What do you plug into x squared plus x plus 1 to cancel it out? Well, those would actually have to be non-real complex numbers. So if we want to do some arithmetic with complex numbers, we could do that. Or we're going to take a, the following approach. Let's plug in... Let's actually plug in negative 2 for a, right? We know it is equal to negative 2 now from the calculation we just did. So if we plug in negative 2, and we do the same thing right here. Let me just get rid of all of these parentheses and things. I'm just going to rewrite it. So once we discover that a is negative 2, we can plug that in there. So we get negative 2 right there, and that's supposed to still equal 9x minus 15 over x cubed minus 1. So what do we do about the b or the c, right? Well, notice b is attached to x. If I were to plug in x equals 0, that would annihilate the b. It doesn't annihilate the a, but hey, a is negative 1 or negative 2. I can live with that. In which case, the left-hand side will be a negative 15 we plugged in, x equals 0. Then we have a negative 2 times 0 plus 0 plus 1. And then we're going to get 0 plus c times negative 1. All right, simplifying what we can here, we get negative 15 is equal to negative 2 minus c. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. We get negative 13 equals negative c. So c equals 13. And so we're then going to make that substitution in above. Okay, so since c turned out to be 13, I'm going to erase that and plug in 13. Uh, so how do I figure out B at this moment? Well, we know what C is. C is a 13. Um, we plugged in and got A. So we plugged in 0. We plugged in 1. We got A and C here. To figure out B, let's just plug in something else. Um, we should plug in something probably pretty easy to do arithmetic with, maybe like negative 1 or 2. Uh, those are both fairly safe examples here. I'm going to do X equals 2. Again, I want the arithmetic to be simple here, X equals 2. On the left-hand side, you're going to get 18 minus 15, which turns out to be 3. On the right-hand side, you're going to get negative 2 times 2 squared is 4 plus 2 plus 1. Uh, we're then going to get 2b plus 13 times 2 minus 1, which is a 1. And so what do we have here? We have, like I said, 3. We're going to get negative 2 times 4 plus 2 plus 1 is a 7. Uh, then we have 2b plus 13. 
If I subtract 13 from both sides, you're gonna get negative 10 is equal to negative 14 plus 2b. If you add 14 to both sides, we get 2b is equal to four, and therefore b is equal to two. So it took a little bit more detective work to figure out the coefficients this time, but if I come up here and then fix my coefficient b, turned out to be two, we now have our partial fraction decomposition. So I have to say that irreducible quadratics do make the process a little bit more challenging because we can't, we can't quite as easily annihilate terms, but this process of annihilation will still work and we can find the partial fraction decomposition uh, for these rational expressions.